my credit score can't be that bad. Bad would be a step up. The basic credit tiers are excellent, good, poor, bad. It's easy. It's all the way at the bottom. I went to school for theater, and so I've always been performing, and this has always been my passion, and I was committed to it uh, and defined sort of success based on who I was performing with or working with and the material. Did it challenge me? Did it in inspire me? And I was satisfied, you know, because I was happy and I was doing what I loved and not a lot of people could do that. And then when eyes started turning towards my work and people got excited about it and I just wasn't ready for that version of success because I had found success. I was like, you know, performing regularly and I felt seen and heard and creative. And so um, it's been overwhelming in the best possible way. I feel really sort of um, excited by uh, this moment right now. Look, I'm sorry. There's no way to get around this credit issue unless you get a co-signer, not me. Or you could put down three or four months rent if you've been saving. Ooh, I have been saving. Okay. <laughs> I was hired just to write, so I wasn't, uh, my whole motive in getting the show was just to be the best writer I could be. It was the first like writer's room for a scripted narrative show that I'd been on. Um, and so I wanted to figure out the room. I wanted to do well. And about three or four months into the writer's room, whenever we had like the first three episodes broken, um, Issa and Prentice had called me into their office uh, and said they would want it me to play Kelly so I didn't even have to audition which is insane I spent the better part of my life auditioning it's not premeditated it's so interesting I think sometimes people think that we craft a scene and then we're just like well let's figure out how to throw a Kelly punch in. But all of the scenes, like in the writer's room, we write from a very holistic approach in telling the story. And our main focus is Issa's story in the show. It's never um, sort of a premeditated <laughs> decision to be like, how can I steal the scene or how can I take it over? Um, and that would be mortifying if that's how it was perceived. But I hope people see it and they're just delighted by a character who's grounded and thoughtful and specific. Oh, oh my God, are y'all okay? Are y'all mad at me? How am I okay? I miss Beyonce, I pissed myself. I got tackled today, Issa. So you are mad at me. I just gotta send in this brief. A lot of my former students reach out to me and they're just so proud. They're just like, yo, miss, I saw you on Insecure. Um, and there, I love them. I taught at KIPP NYC College Prep in the Bronx, and they are just the realists. So they'll tell me if something's not great. And uh, they uh, are big fans of the show, which is wonderful. And I feel like the best lesson that I was able to teach them was to like continue to pursue my dreams after I was teaching theater, because I felt like I was there and I was telling them, you know, this is something you can do for a living. This is a passion. If it's your passion, you can do it. And just to be able to cash that check in my own life, to be like, see, I'm doing it. And um, it took a lot of work and it took a lot of, you know, roads that were unexpected and steps that were unexpected, but I'm here. So yeah, being prolific and not perfect. And I think it really also taught me to, is to not try to change my voice to sort of fit another mold. I think that when I was there, I was so desperate to try to um, write things that would make the air and like, you know, to write the perfect sketch and to like make the room laugh and to be this, uh, this person that was accepted and that deserved to be there. And it took me a while to realize that I was there. Do you know what I mean? Like I didn't have to continue to, to want to be there. I was there. So accepting where my career has taken me is, you know, was a huge thing that I've learned. There are a lot of Jewish men who only date Jewish women. And nobody calls them out. So why can't I be Orthodox black? Because that's not a religion. Uh, speak for yourself. That's my religion. Kelly, shut up. You don't even go to church. I would love to uh, be a lead in a rom-com. Uh, <laughs> I love rom-coms and I think that to have sort of uh, a rom-com where the protagonist is, you know, a plus size brown girl and both of those things have nothing to do with the plot would be revolutionary. I think I've never seen that. <laughs> and so it would be really dope to do. 
Um, I'd love to do animation. I love voice work. Character work is my jam. And so to be able to play with my voice in cool ways, um, I'd love to figure out how to do that. And I mean, I'm not afraid to be a superhero. <laughs> Honestly, I think that I, I, what's continue, what, like what continues to be true about the projects that I'm drawn to is, uh, you know, am I working with people that excite and inspire me? And does the material, does it challenge me and excite me and say something? And so anything in those worlds, but on top of that, you know, I'd love to run through an airport and shout some dude's name. <laughs> go on important days like when I come back from Miami the Lord knows I get turned